through the eyes of a traveler. Hello world and welcome back. Part two of my journey from Karachi to Gawadar. And today we're going to visit a mud volcano. First, let me say hello on behalf of my steed, my Suzuki Inazuma 250. That's the track. That's the mud volcano in front of us. I've changed the tires on this bike to make it more adventurous. It's got high grip tires now, um, enduro tires if you want to call them that. And um, I'm going to push this bike and see if I can make this naked uh, bike into more of an adventure bike. That's the plan in this whole journey. Obviously the main purpose of the journey is to see the sights, but also to test this bike out because in the country that this bike sits, which is Pakistan, there aren't many 250 Japanese engineered bikes. There's actually only two. That's this one, the Inazuma 250, and the CB250 Honda. But the CB250 is air-cooled, not water-cooled. And for that reason, I've discounted that for now, and I'm working on this. So, let's head to that volcano. First thoughts riding off-road, the grip is fantastic. The power of this bike, though it's only 250, has always impressed me. But the grip with these new Enduro tires is, is great. Uh, I'm riding on sand and it's about uh, three to four inches thick. So it's enough to make the bike lose traction, uh, lose its line. But so far, so good, um, though I must confess, being 100 kilograms does help the bike hold its line. <laughs> yes, I am a big, big fellow. <laughs> I don't go anywhere without my sun hat. And this is, uh, for me, a must. All prepped up, deep breaths, gonna go up that hill very very soon folks the temperature here is immense it's high in terms of numbers degrees centigrade I don't know uh, but it's enough for me to sweat buckets and these steps aren't helping the cause but one has to get to the top to see the mud volcano and so onwards and upwards a long way upwards I think mm. left right left right left right left right well if you guys are feeling dizzy imagine what I'm going through so I apologize for the way I recorded this I did actually hold the camera in such a way that um, I thought I'd show you the movement. Show you some kind of panoramic view of the area. It's, uh, there's many steps to get up here. I've been told there's 460 steps one way. So that's 920 if my maths doesn't doesn't fail me there and back and in the distance you can see the sea you may be also hearing the bubbling the bubbling sound as if I shut up maybe not with wind in the background but that's the, the mud coming out of the volcano so many more steps to go and uh, great views to Sometimes we're unfortunate and when we get to a place where we want to see something spectacular, we don't see it. So I've included some pictures of the mud volcanoes here. Um, they are truly epic in terms of something novel, new, uh, something that isn't so commonplace, very rare. But um, 
you will see me get to the top by hook or by crook, even though my body is failing me as I'm taking one step at a time. I have to explain that uh, there are two elderly gentlemen at the bottom and they stay here at the foot of the mud volcano um, on the unfortunate off chance when people venture deeper into the volcano and actually sink inside it. They did say to me that please do stay on the edge. Uh, if you are going to go in the, in the middle, then we're going to accompany you. And looking at their frail bodies, I mean, they were... 70 plus i thought well one i'm not going to take that risk and two why would i put them through the torture of going up those 460 steps and then back down again it's windy here and the wind has taken my hat off my head so the scorching heat is making me suffer more but every time i get close to my hat it jumps Last time. Yippee! Got it, finally. Let's get back to the top. If I was to be rude, I'd say the mountain's letting one rip, which means it's farting. Uh, let's wait for it. Wait for it. Oop, there it goes again. <laughs> Round and round we go on the rim of the volcano. This gentleman I saw and spotted at the bottom. He wanted to talk to me and congratulate me on getting to the top. I guess it's my mass that made him think I wouldn't make it. <laughs> it's a fair point. I thought I wasn't going to make it for a while either. Anyway, take care buddy. Time to head down, still in one piece, slightly intact, uh, but barely. Um, and knowing that my bike was waiting for me and the journey ahead was long, uh, kind of pushed me to get on my way. Right folks, so I'm uh, approaching a place called Bundmanir. Bundmanir? Bundmanir, I think. And if you can see in the picture, you can see some uh, light blue water and maybe like a palm tree on top of a mound of dirt. Well, that's where the sea starts. So in about 10 kilometers, we'll be right on the beach. But I saw 
a parcel of water. And I thought, you know what, with all the desert that I've seen and the non-arable land, I will stop here and show you this. That's uh, my steed. I'll give you another look at that. I'm doing the old-fashioned way. I always bring a rucksack and I tie it down with bungee cords. It's not pannier, it's not a top box, it's not the best way to do it. It's always served me well. So I'm keeping to that that I have proven to work for me. And now I'm going to show you this road. And then I'm going to show you this view, which is why I really stopped here. Hello, doggy. Right, that view anyway, let's get back to the view. That is a beautiful view. I'm not sure if the camera's doing it justice, but that's the view. This is a more magnified view, um, and it is quite eye-catching, to say the least. Off to Gundamalir, I think. The beautiful beaches of Gundamalir. I had planned to stay there, but there's only one uh, hotel for want of a better description and the chap that ran it was quite rude and to be honest um, courtesy costs nothing but it's a treasure that's worth just increases when you spend it on others so I headed on to a little town called Ormara uh, and that was a great decision time to hit the road again uh, so to everyone be safe ride safe keep smiling Take care.